All right. That was Miss Dreadful with Schizophrenic Psychopathic Love. And stay tuned. Miss Dreadful is in the studio. We are sizing up the mics for them to do a live interview here coming up very shortly. Before Miss Dreadful, you heard Stevie Vai with the track Die to Live. Before that was Flyleaf and New Horizons. And In This Moment gave us Black Wedding. We're going to have a few important words, and we'll be back with more music shortly. Here's some simple math that'll make you feel like a genius. Transfer your current car loan to Cardinal Community Credit Union and save serious money. In fact, if you don't save with Cardinal, we'll pay $50. You save or we pay. It's a no-brainer. Plus, when you move the loan to Cardinal, we'll reward your brilliance with $125 in cash. Stop in or visit cardinalcu.com. You save or we pay. Only at Cardinal Community Credit Union. Offering rate may vary depending on individual credit history. All loans subject to credit approval. Offer may be withdrawn at any time. You're listening to Lakeland's Lake Effect Radio, the official home of Lakeland Sports. If you want to watch or listen, you can tune to LakeEffectRadio.org. Sports. Go Lakers! Broadcasting around the world on the World Wide Web. This is Lake Effect Radio, your number one internet radio station. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. Internet radio stations around. You're listening to Lake Effect Radio. One by one, the kingdoms fall. I looked upon this isle and took it all. Harbingers of pine. Edmund the martyr cut down by a dine. On the orders of Ivor the boneless. Barbarian.
And we are in the studio of Lake Effect Radio on the campus of Lakeland Community College in beautiful Kirtland, Ohio. The short set that we just heard started with the darkness and barbarian. The yeah, yeah, yeahs gave us hysteric. And Comic Control got in there with darkness moves. And we heard two tracks in a row from Miss Dreadful. The last one was Taxidermy Boyfriend. And before that was Leave Your Friends Behind. They're both from their album Evil Hides. And it just so has it, Miss Dreadful is in the studio with us at this moment. Um, So hello to you. Thanks for being here. And they are armed with guitars, as you can see, or if you can't see, you take our word for it. But we're going to chat a while with uh, this local band. And first of all, when did you guys start? Mm. Um, so we've been playing music together for five years now. Um, I started this band. There's been a few different names and lineups, but I started it seven years ago, and he joined two years later. I think it's. I think I've been doing this for seven years. Yeah, I think that's about yeah. the joined. And you guys have been together for five. Yeah. Yeah. Steadily. Yeah. Um, if, if there's somebody not familiar so much with you, you finish this sentence or fill it in. If people like to listen to blank, they need to hear us. Who would you say? A few bands come to mind. Joan Jett, Misfits. Yeah, yeah definitely that. Probably yeah. a little closer to like the Danzig era misfits. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Spot on. Yeah. Um how would you describe your music? You know, both, you know, lyrically and musically. How would you describe it to somebody if they said, Well what kind of music do you play? So we call ourselves horror rock. Kinda like horror punk, but our sound is blues based hard rock. I have a very classic rock influence. Lyrically, all kinds of different things. Uh, B-movies, big (laughs) influence. Yeah. I think it really depends on which uh, iteration of the band it is, too. Like, if it's with the full electric setup, then it's going to have more like what you just heard on the recording. Or, you know, when we do the acoustic stuff it's more uh how did you describe it like still bluesy yeah, it's a little like, more of a folky yeah. element it's got a little more folk. laid back not as in your face as with the whole band I, I was gonna say that um having you know listened to the whole thing to try to prepare and i wasn't you know too familiar with you before last week <laughs> sad for me to say that but uh but it did. What hit me was um, it's in your face rock. A lot of the songs do lean towards punk, pretty much, you know, straight lace. But it, it's definitely uh, it's got the hard edge, but it's not not over the top at all. It, it's very um, structured, I think. Uh, and all you people, you just need to hear it if you uh, <laughs> you know haven't gotten into them yet. Just you know, give them a shot. Your album, Evil Hides. It, it dropped kind of recently. Was it the June? June. It came out. Okay. Where is it available? Uh, pretty much anywhere online. Spotify, YouTube, Bandcamp. I think iTunes, Amazon, all the major music retailers. Okay. iHeart. Yeah, it's on iHeart. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. Um. Where are you guys on social media? If people want to be your friend and keep up with you, where would you like them to go? Uh, You can find us on Facebook. It's Miss Dreadful. And Instagram and Twitter is The Miss Dreadful. And our band camp is Miss Dreadful. So if you just Google Miss Dreadful, Dreadful, you'll find us. Say in the last five years, not before that, but in this, in this past five years, is all your material original? Do you do it? Yeah. Um, yes. You, you've always, yeah, you've always done that. Um, 
lyrically and musically and or musically is it a collaborative effort between the two of you it's all it's all miss <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I do most of the yeah. writing I I usually like to write by myself because I don't I get nervous to show my songs to people so I like to have it finished and then he kind of does his thing and it always works but mm -hmm. like more recently I've been getting more comfortable with being like hey I'm working on this it's not done and he's kind of helping me finish some songs so okay it's like you're writing the poems let's say the you know the lyrics are there you're putting music to them. well That's I um yeah like I write the whole song and then I play it for him okay but um there are some more recent songs that aren't released yet that I've been showing him hey I'm working on this I haven't finished it I don't know what to do with this and so then with those there is more yeah. of a collaboration yeah definitely more recently than yeah as growth will dictate probably as, as you move on it, it, what what artists do you think influence you the most musically um slash definitely okay. i always wanted to be slash when i first started playing guitar i don't we all <laughs> yeah <laughs> huge bowie fan um a lot of different classic rock bands like zeppelin sabbath things like that Let me ask this: Do you have um, do you have professional representation within the music industry right now? You're an agent, a label. You did you self-release your album? Yes. Yeah, your we did label? it all ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Every, everything has been independent. Yeah. Yeah. But with that, I gotta ask one thing. So, where did the name come from? So we used to be Doctor Dreadful. Which was kind of... Well, no, you were someone else before. Yeah, well, the, originally, um, the band was the Tombstoners. <laughs> and we changed it uh, to Dr. Dreadful just because we liked how the words sounded together. And um, some time went by and we didn't really have a drummer. It was just me and him. So I decided I wanted to try doing some acoustic stuff so I could still play shows without having a drummer. And I didn't want to go by Dr. Dreadful for the acoustic shows. So I went by Miss Dreadful. And the name sounded good. And we were like, let's leave behind Dr. Dreadful and start this new chapter as Miss Dreadful. Yeah. That's <laughs> pretty much it. <laughs> Fair enough in that. It's not always that elaborate story. Right. That. So, but it is, I could see, yeah, it definitely is catchy. It's definitely interesting right off top of bat. I can see where that, it's like you just hear it. It's like, yeah, that, that that's, that's what we want to do. It, de it definitely seems a little bit more coherent than having a Dr. Dreadful. Yeah. Being that she is the lead singer, lead guitarist, and basically making her that personification of Miss Dreadful as a concept actually makes it a little bit more tangible. Yeah. It's, a, it's an image. You know, it's an mm -hmm. image thing. So you, you, know, you, you want people to form an image in their mind if they just hear the name Miss Dreadful. And what is that? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the ideal image you want people to think of? If they just hear Miss Dreadful, is it uh, an example I use is when you hear Alice Cooper back in the day. Myself, I think of giant spider webs, you know, or something like that. So, is the stage persona is your say album artwork that's forthcoming or anything in the future? Does it have a specific genre itself that goes with the name? say spooky <laughs> like, okay. in general spooky things yeah kind of quirky as well be movie horror yeah I mean, that's again where you have your biggest draws and influences from when you start doing the lyrics and stuff uh, so definitely be movie horror where it's not 
like to be taken seriously, but not too yeah, sure. much. So, like, yeah. have fun with it. It's a, it's a good segue into this little section to to talk specifically about the the songs that were just played here since six p.m. Um, and you know, I just I mentioned the song, and you think of the lyrics alone at this point, just the lyrics, and thinking of that B movie persona, you know, that you may have, and Evil Hides, the title track of the album. Why is it the title track? What does it mean? Um, so Evil Hides, the song itself, was inspired by a news article that I had read about a serial killer, and evil hides behind this smile is, you know, like you put on this front of being nice or innocent, but in reality, you're evil and you're gonna trick someone, lure them back somewhere, and kill them. And I just like that line, so that was the name of the song, and it just, I, I don't know, I felt like that was the perfect name for this album. I seem nice, but <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> See, but all of us have dark sides on the outside, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Two of my favorites are coming up here first. Taxidermy Boyfriend. Uh, what's the deal with that? So that's just about someone's boyfriend dies, so she stuffs him up and ends up liking him better that way. <laughs> A lot more ingredients in that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have probably been there. Yeah, yeah true. I have a lot of those. And then probably right now it, it's a toss-up between the song that we didn't play that I will get into probably in coming shows. Um, but Schizophrenic Psychopathic Love is one that draws you right away. And, and it's got some cool lyrics. What, what about that one? So that's... Um I like to write a lot about murderers for some reason. So that one, the narrator of the song is in a relationship with a serial killer and they feel trapped. Like they're sick of being around for all of these horrible things that this person does, but they feel like they can't leave. I mean, maybe if they left, he would kill her or maybe she feels like even though he does these awful things, she still loves him and wants to um, kind of forget about the, the bad parts of him. So it's, it could be um, compared to someone stuck in a toxic or abusive relationship even. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finally leave your friends behind. Sounds a little more personal maybe. Uh, it's actually not. It's, no? um, it's if, I were a cult leader. It's my speech to my followers. Ah, so a little misleading. <laughs> yeah, a little, but it makes perfect sense. You know, that's, I've never really cool. asked these questions. Blindly <laughs> <laughs> gone along and played the damn songs. Exactly. Well, that's a that's the danger of interviews. See, um, you're live. a follower. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> you're part of her, you know, speech. I drank the Kool Aid on that one. <laughs> Here's one you'll be easier and you'll like a lot better explain the differences and how you feel personally about studio recording you know doing your songs perfecting them getting them done in a studio so that they're ready you know to be released go on an album or whatever as compared to performing live what's the differences for you live is more fun and definitely drink way more caffeine than I need to when I'm in the studio <laughs> it's just trying to stay yeah. awake and keep playing that same song yeah. over and over again until it's just, just keep right, it perfectly yeah. versus the live experience you, you just wing it I, yeah. I mean yeah. obviously you I mean, practice, you practice but, but well, yeah if you mess happens, up you, you mess up and you keep more, going yeah everything's more forgiving on yeah. the stage that's yeah, really it's just, cheaper than a studio yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, do we want to break off and play a couple songs Tell us sure. what you're going to do. Just get into a couple of them. Go ahead. Do you want to start with um, one of the ones not on the album? Um, yeah, we could do that. Mississippi River Monster? Ain't 
crazy being a poor girl Living in a rich man's world Take all they can from me Even though they got everything Started late one night Walking on by moonlight Some agreed and tried to follow me So I led them to the Mississippi Kneel down by its murky depths And I knew it was my only chance I held his head under the water For the Mississippi River monster Yeah, I held his head under the water For the Mississippi River monster Yeah, I held his head under the water For the Mississippi River monster Yeah, I held his head under the water For the Mississippi River monster And I lay in the water and I pray and I lay in the water and I pray to the monster and I lay in the water and I pray to the monster and I lay in the water and I pray to the monster and I drown in a man in this awful town that ever tried to mess me around drown in a man in this awful town Tries to mess me around Drown any man in this awful town That ever tries to mess me around Drown any man in this awful town That ever tries to mess me around I held his head under the water For the Mississippi River monster Yeah, I held his head under the water For the Mississippi River monster Yeah, I held his head under the water For the Mississippi River monster Yeah, I held his head under the water For the Mississippi River monster And I lay in the water And I pray to the monster And I lay Real nice. I, I could hear the blues influence definitely on that song. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, you know, that's Most definitely on that. Mississippi River Monster, performed live by Miss Dreadful. What's next? Taxidermy? Yeah, why not? Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> His heart isn't beat, his eyes don't blink, he doesn't speak, he's the one for me, he won't ever leave, always live for me, for eternity, I don't need a ring, sex a dummy boyfriend, I love spin say.
become stronger Now that you'll speak Says it to me, poor friend I just been say Says it to me, poor friend in this room. I won't you tell you what that. just happened. <laughs> you just drop your water cap and yeah. your guitar. <laughs> she, she, she couldn't do that twice. <laughs> <laughs> you want to almost just give her another one to see if that could happen. No. <laughs> I popped a string and you... <laughs> yeah, he, um, before we came in here, his string just popped. Well, Luckily, he has 11 others. Yeah. At least all 11 did let like, go at one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been bad. With the with the fantastic acoustics of an eight by seven room, I don't think anyone's gonna notice. <laughs> but I'll sort of do this, it's like in a way, I sort of like seeing people's opinions. So off your album, mm -hmm. the top three that would say these are the best. I know, I'm making you pick your kids. I'm a very bad person. My, I just helped with them. I mean, my favorite is Death Take My Hand. Um, I think Howling. Howling is definitely a little more fun ones to play on bass, because it's, there is a lot of bass heavy groove into that. Um, actually, I really like playing Black Snake too. Yeah, that's a fun one. Those last two you mentioned, Howling and Black Snake, are different to me. Mm -hmm. Just listening to them maybe three times through, they're a little bit different than some of the other songs that are on there. So maybe maybe more, like you said, more challenging for you to play, a little different. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of that had to do with um, the drummer that we originally had written them with and then having someone else come in as a fill-in during this time and them bringing their own style, which was able to allow me to have more, um, I guess, uh, creative range on what I could do with the bass. And it definitely changed up the style of how things were um, written from then on, too. Yeah, shout out to Joel, yeah. who drummed on our album. And Heidi, who's been helping us out through yeah. all this stuff, too. Heidi. Uh, filled in quite a few times for us the past few years. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, you guys <laughs> rock. <laughs> since so, since this album has dropped in June, is that what you've been doing, playing out as much as possible? Yeah, we're doing a lot of the acoustic shows because we are still uh, actively seeing the drummer. Um, so, if anyone hears this, <laughs> wants to join, let us know. Um, but yeah, we're. Actually, so far, it's been almost a show every weekend for us. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing a lot of acoustic shows and kind of making plans for some music videos mm -hmm. that we want to put out. And then the acoustic EP. Yeah, we want to do an acoustic EP, too, because there are some songs that were written to be played acoustically, so I've been itching to record them, but got so many other things to do first. Yeah. It's more that winter thing when you can't, you know, yeah. go out and about. So, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> it's that time of year's coming, don't yeah. worry. Don't get your <laughs> wish of that. So. Ge geographically, where are you? Where have you played? Where are you playing? 
So right now, mostly Akron area. We're playing on Saturday in Beach City at McAlpine Meadery. And we're gonna be in Toledo in October. Um, we've played out of state acoustically last year when we did the acoustic tour. That was when the name change came about. So we've been slowly trying to branch out, play new places. Fair enough. Because that sort of grabs the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But I'll somewhat go with this. From a year from today, where do you want to see your accomplishments as a group? I know I make you think <laughs> no, too. I mean, I, I definitely would like to have a music video mm -hmm. out for this album by that time. Definitely that, play out a save more. Mm -hmm. Maybe even have the EP done. Yeah, I, <laughs> really I would like to do all way. that if possible, but. Yeah. A year goes by fast. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a normal thing, life, yeah. work. Yep. Because, was it six months for the album? It was, it yeah, I mean, it was a pretty longer. long process. Yeah. And the uh, time span of the first music video. Yeah, that that was a long process too. But there were delays outside of our power for that one. Yeah. But yeah, I'd like to have at least one video a year that from now and grow our fan base a little bit more. Fair enough. But I'll somewhat go with you had a choice any venue to play in the United States, is it any certain place they would want to go? So the only one that I've been to outside of Ohio would be White River Amphitheater in Seattle, and the Soto Showbox out there too, isn't that bad? Um, definitely the amphitheaters, you know, that was pretty awesome. Um, so as far as other venues out, side of Ohio I don't know of too many I mean locally it'd be cool to play a place like the Akron Civic oh, yeah. Theater or nice yeah <laughs> that'd yeah. be cool very true I know Jacobs is always on people's wish lists too yeah yeah <laughs> that Nautica Theater on the river is a really cool place for bands, you, you'd do great there. Yeah. On the, uh, back to the album, back to some songs. But there, you know, there is not just one style on this album. It isn't just one cookie cutter type of rock or type of punk after another. There's there's good variety. Uh, I say that because I mean it. And the song Nicotine seems like one that you'd get your fans in the mosh pit up immediately thrashing about or something like that. A, do you like doing like super fast fun stuff like that as yeah. well? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, that song <laughs> that's a, one of that's probably the fastest one on the album, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's fun yeah. to play that kind of stuff and get that uh Get the that en yeah, get that energy, get people excited. Right, right, and, and the words to it are a little bit. Yeah, little, I think a lot of people. Too. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people could relate to that. So. True. Yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe more so than taxidermy boyfriend. I don't <laughs> but no, no, <laughs> the meaning behind it, especially exactly. now. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has that moment of, I wish, you know, I didn't have to deal with this person if they were, you know, like that piece of cardboard or something. <laughs> it's a lot better, you know. Everybody would like certain people stuffed more than they like them not stuffed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now that we know with that, it's, you know, 
it's not as strange as you think. Yeah. It's, it's pretty realistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it relates to people like, I wouldn't say what, probably 70, 30. I know certain days people, they just don't want to deal with people. <laughs> so it's relatable in human nature for sure. <laughs> Want to sing some more? Yeah. Uh, you want to do Death Take My Hand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. seem to have um you do the the hard rock and the punk rock but you can sit here with the acoustic guitars and you turn into very bluesy soulful uh, different kind of group thank yeah. you yeah it's, it it almost seems it almost seems you're not, i'm not going to use the term better either way both are great seems like you enjoy performing the acoustic stuff and, and singing that just a little bit more singing that way is that that's different than the album's mm. release obviously yeah so you kind of have a you got multiple personalities yeah. maybe this band this yeah like both <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes true. very much so <laughs> yeah, okay. um, no both are fun like playing acoustically for me it's more laid back there's less pressure so it's it's very enjoyable very intimate but with the full band, like to bring around. What? I said it's a hell of a lot more convenient to bring. Oh yeah, a lot less sure. equipment. Put this in the car and just go. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. But a lot with less to the, move. Yeah, and the full band's great too because it's a totally different energy. Mm. So, you, d I get to put on a different persona, and that's a lot of fun too. So I, I really love doing both. Yeah. 
perhaps there'll be, you know, as you start churning albums out each year, you're going to have both of those, um, both of those identities. Yeah. One is, is the hard rockers with the full rock band. One is possibly just the two of you guys um, doing more soulful stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's super. Yeah. I don't believe it's the more reason to get out there. You grab the people. You only have to just be at a like stage that you can go to different parts and all that. Mm. So in a way, you're sort of grabbing the whole demographic that way. Yeah. yeah. Very smart. Probably yeah, reach yeah. people that we wouldn't necessarily mm. have reached through uh, the acoustic yeah. shows or uh, via the harder shows sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Some, sometimes bands, you know, sometimes rock bands do a, or live a whole career uh, 20 years or something like that put out several albums and all of a sudden they're in the studio and they're doing some, you know something different you're you're you got them both going on <laughs> you know from the get-go in the early days so there's no, definitely nothing wrong with that and everything right with it for sure you, you do um, as you said you write songs about uh, serial killers <laughs> yeah. possibly the macabre yeah. type stuff tell everybody about butcher boy um, Butcher Boy is, uh, I mean, I guess it could be a serial killer, but it's, it's really person, their significant other would kill for them. You know, they, they would protect them in any way possible. So if that means hurting someone or killing someone, they'll do it to make sure that their significant other is safe. You think I'm just saying it? What? Uh, huh? You started looking around like, I don't know. I don't know, the room just got quiet. <laughs> that was all I had to say oh, about okay. the song. Uh, <laughs> again, I have never actually asked these questions and what the song You're sort of saying you're questioning many things, aren't you? Yeah. He's like, should I still be in this band? Do I have to worry about you know, leaving tonight? <laughs> Especially with the woods behind the building. <laughs> right. I know, I just mean that. Just a touch awkward. <laughs> I no, think I'm just joking. It'll just inspire more songs, I think. That's <laughs> true. <Yeah. laughs> Very true. Well, you got to have inspiration. Um, yeah. And you draw it from a lot of different uh, places. Um Tell me about bass players. Who do you, who do you love? What what great ones might not even be with us anymore? Anybody fall into the category of? Um, actually, to be honest, I didn't start out as a bass player. Oh. Uh, I've been playing guitar for sixteen years, and then it wasn't until five years ago where um, it was actually before I was really part of the band. Uh, the original bass player. Um, needed a fill-in and you know, so I learned all these songs the day of the show <laughs> just kind of <laughs> jumped down and bass for that right. um, so I, I guess over the years uh, I, you know, I definitely Flea needs all due respect um, Peter Steele of Typo Negative just with that kind of more of a chuggy you know almost a sludgy kind of slower way of playing yeah. um, let's see uh, Lemmy just because it was more there aggressive you go. oh yeah uh, can't think of the name of the guy but the uh, bass player who's in um, or was in Mudvayne I can't think of the name of him off the top of my head but definitely him because he's just got he is all over the place so out of necessity, you became a bass player, and a, yeah, and a pretty and good it, one. Yeah, and it's it started to grow on me. Yeah, and you got guitar covered. So yeah, it, on the um, on the electric versions, you know, on the album and everything, you're playing both the uh, leads and the rhythm guitars. Yeah, for okay. um, yes. all but two songs, you did. Well, you did the lead on "Death Take My Hand." And you did a uh, second guitar on, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the title, <laughs> but <laughs> there's another song that you played on. The Blood Song. Yeah, The Blood Song. <laughs> but... 
Oh, that was, yeah, I think that yeah. was fine, actually. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's just, good. It's, it's just some of the lyrics in there that, uh, yeah, maybe just one lyric in there. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Other than that, I think I did everything else. Yeah. Yeah. My, um thought I always have with any artist and musicians, I always like to say uh, the, the best project or your best project is your next project. So what's, I mean, even though you're, you're very new, you're touring this album, you got to push this album for the next year and you will, there's, I know there's always something back there, some, some type of project, you know, that's going mm -hmm. on there. So well, can you give us any insight? a little tidbit of something that we can look forward to yeah um definitely music videos for this album uh hopefully two at least one and the acoustic ep that's like <laughs> i want to do it right now but i can't uh -huh. on the so. on the videos is there a is it a b-movie expectation that we can have or something you like is it going to be that type of of material supporting I the music I think kind of for one of them. What I, one of them, there's probably going to be a lot of blood in it. It wouldn't be one of our videos otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. Well, it's, yeah. it's video in itself, you know, what you see kind of sticks with you too. So it's probably really important and lasting, you know, the, the style uh, of a video and images you know that, that people are going to see and they're going to expect that and then yeah. correlate your band to them for sure so if it's blood you know <laughs> and gore and everything you know yeah, yeah definitely uh more b-movie gore though like oh yeah yeah like <laughs> that's the best kind yeah I always like the movie with the uh, tarantino or the movies with the uh, tarantino over the <laughs> top just it yeah way more than needs be but yeah Ridiculous player. amounts of blood. Yeah. For paper cut. <laughs> <laughs> but it grabs people's attention. Yeah. So that's the one good thing out of it. And it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> true. True, true, true. But I'll sort of go here. So what first got you in the music? Where did the beginning come? Was it a certain thing? listening to a certain song? Uh, well, for me, uh, I was listening to Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses. And that's what made me pick up guitar. As I just originally just wanted to be a guitar player, and then I picked up singing. That was it for me with that moment. That's when I knew I wanted to do this. Definitely for me, I was... I grew up in a small town out in Washington State, uh, Squim, Washington, and uh, kind of hour northwest of Seattle. And you know, it was the '90s, so like Nirvana was always a huge, huge, huge thing for me. And it was, I guess, hearing Nirvana for the first time and it being my first real connection with music. Um, I had an uncle who was a drummer as well in a band. I think they were from here and then moved to Chicago, the Drovers. Um, anyway, uh, you know, having him be that drummer, awesome uncle that I looked up to, and then you know, with all the things with Nirvana and stuff happening, um, you know, that was definitely just a huge like, yeah, this is this is me. Just found my niche and just went with it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Then I'm going to sort of go uh, out of your own work. Is it that you have that one song that meant the most to you? Whether it was a certain time in your life, you're going through, you know, something. What would be that one? I don't know. I, I know. I know. started going a little deep there, huh? I think the song that you know, was most meaningful was probably um, 
death take my hand for myself for this album because it is so I guess intimate on and kind of raw on the emotions in playing it and there was there was a lot of structure that went into recording that song too and, you know, originally we were going to re record that with the lead guitar being you know plugged in but not with any effects and then you know, she just plugged in with the acoustic on that one and then the layering and building and the result that it came out with you know, that was yeah. really really happy with that yeah it's a lot different than what we've previously done a lot of guitar tracks a lot of I really like how it came out, so that's definitely my favorite song on the album. I think it's got the most emotion in it, too, so, yeah, I would agree with you. Is it the one you want to uh, have a supporting video with? It's like, is that the top of the list? For me, yeah. yeah. There's, that's, there's like a couple that we want to do, but I think... Yeah. Just because of how much work has gone into that song and tried to figure out what to do with that originally when you had first presented that song. Yeah, I wrote that song like before I met you so long ago and I didn't think I would ever do anything with it because back then I, I didn't see it as a song for the band so I just left it alone and when we were working on this album I thought maybe we could do something with this and it we did <laughs> I'm really proud of it yes. I, I don't think there's anything more to say on that <laughs> yeah enough about yeah, that no. song <laughs> well it, you've uh, not only that but uh, everything that you've shared um, has given great insight on Miss Dreadful, the band and the history, you know, and your songs in this album, which is right now one of the most important things, you know, I think going forward for in this moment, um, to, you know, push that and keep going. Best, best of luck to you. And, Thank you. Uh, and you know, we're gonna, I'll get out to a show here. Gotta, yeah. Gotta see you guys. Saturday yeah. night, McAlpine Meadery. Yeah, we're coming. <laughs> Did you say Toledo? Yeah. yeah, we're come out to yeah. Toledo. True. <laughs> you never know. There might be people out there watching right now. Yeah. There's, yeah, and thing, the more you play, what, what happens is other bands, you meet these other bands, and the other bands take a liking to you, mm -hmm. you know, and vice versa. You'll have that chance to, you know, in the future, and they want you with them. Hey, come do the show with Down us. Down in Akron. You know, it's, yeah. Civic, yeah. Akron's a big music town, really. Is. There's a lot yeah, of, there's so many uh, of, talented yeah. bands a lot of stuff in Akron. Coming out of there. Akron, because it's a stone's throw from Kent, which is the same thing. So you mm -hmm. got the, the entire region is, is filled with a lot of a lot of great people doing great yeah. stuff. Yeah, we <laughs> have a really good music scene in Northeast Ohio. A lot of really yeah. talented musicians here. For sure, always have you know, for many yeah. many years, and you're looking at someone who's <laughs> lived through it. You know, obviously, and believe me, um, you, you want to play one more for us as time winds down? Yes. Do you want to play Devil Inside You? Shit all the way 
I was born with different blood inside me. I can still hear them say, You got the devil inside you. 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 Uh, the band Miss Dreadful is going places. Thank you. I really do, uh, folks. You you've heard it, you see it. Um, get out there and support them. They no deserve word. it. I just posted it off of social media. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this I understand this. All this stuff goes uh, up on YouTube forever and ever, mm -hmm. right? So the, you know this entire interview and everything you did is there. So, I so like when they make it too big, that they go and say, "Well, we're going to put copyrights, and it's <laughs> going to come down." Yeah, then it's going to go away. No, I, I think it's cool because <laughs> we got our our permission when we came yeah. here. So, except Google doesn't know better. True. They yeah, just block so, yeah. Some of the copyright things. I uh, think some people. I think somebody. Yeah, on Facebook posted they were playing their own music that they wrote and recorded in the background of one of their videos and it got flagged <laughs> for copyright. Yeah, I saw someone on Facebook who had actually just done a cover of one of their own songs, kind of like we've done with the acoustic and Facebook took them off. <laughs> it's just like, okay. Fail. <laughs> oh, there's so much stuff. Technology. You, you, you can't control it anymore. It's just it's insane. Do you have any sort of other questions? Uh, the very Besides last thing the on the cheat sheet is, um, you know, what do you want to say to your current fans, new fans? What would you like everybody to hear from Miss Dreadful on September 19th, 2018? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks. for sticking it through with us. Yeah. Thanks for coming to shows. Helping us out. Yeah, definitely met some really, really good people along the road with this, and can't wait to meet more. Yeah. Super. I can't wait to hear more music. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a video. Yeah. Definitely would be interesting. 
interest in that. See where that develops to. Yeah, we have some ideas. <laughs> you guys are creative. I know we surf that, you know, knock out of the park. <laughs> so We were actually going to do some more of the discussion of the videos tonight, weren't we? Yeah, we might might work on some more plans. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. Besides, if people want to find you, you guys have, I know Instagram, Facebook. Mm-hmm. Twitter, Bandcamp. Ben, We're ben on, like, all the all streaming things, things too. Yeah. So. I didn't know our full album was on YouTube. Yeah, it's up there. You can stream it on YouTube if you want. They'll pick up everything. Yeah. yeah. If it's on Amazon and iTunes and things like that, it's going to show up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you go, YouTube? How did I get on there? Or something like that. And it's streaming. Yeah. They, they probably have the album cover. Yeah. Um, and, and just play all the songs. So. Yeah. If, if they want to find you, you have to be blind not to be able to find them, basically. <laughs> Especially this modern age. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Plus, you have forward-thinking DJs and college radio stations that uh, are going to push them forward big time. <laughs> mm -hmm. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for no having problem. us. No. No problem, guys. Our pleasure, yeah, yeah, for sure. What a treat. Most definitely. Besides that, I got nothing <laughs> except thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Definitely sorry about your strict speed <laughs> sacrifice <laughs> for the cause. <laughs> hey, it worked. I was able to. Yeah, you still <laughs> managed to play the songs with a missing string, so. It's Prop it's pretty Prop good. Strap all the time. <laughs> Always something. Definitely Always props something. for you know dropping the, your cap and adding a guitar. Right. Yeah, the first time that ever happened to I give props to that. That took some talent. Uh, usually it's my pick. <laughs> I'm just glad it wasn't my pick. True. Valid. Very valid. <laughs> to Cardinal? We'll reward your brilliance with $125 in cash. Stop in or visit cardinalcu.com. You save or we pay. Only at Cardinal Community Credit Union. Offering rate may vary depending on individual credit history. All loans subject to credit approval. Offer may be withdrawn at any time. Lakeland's campus is now protected by Lakeland Safe. With this app, safety is in your hands. You can directly connect to the campus police for safety, send text, photos, or video of security concerns on campus, receive campus safety alerts directly to you, and do your part to help keep our campus safe. Get it on Google Play or the App Store. Are you a single mom? If you are, there's a program called SMART, or Single Mothers Achieving Real Triumph. SMART is a support networking and scholarship program which helps single mothers achieve academic success. The requirements, you must participate and be a new student either in your first or second semester in college, have demonstrated financial need, or attend uh, colleges on Tuesdays and Thursdays, at least six credits, and you must be available to attend workshops. Students must be enrolled in English 0111 or English 1111 to participate. This is an on-campus daytime program and some of the program benefits are you can gain access to resources which are available to students that you might not otherwise know about, acquire skills to help you interact effectively with instructors and college personnel, and meet weekly for support and networking. If you're interested in this program, give a call to the Women's Center at Lakeland Community College at 440-525-7322 or email vwilliams at lakelandcc.edu. Lakeland Community College Library, Tech Time. Need help setting up a new device? Want to access digital?